Hello everyone, my name is Alex Dahl. I'm a mineral grinding expert and I'm in the process right now of reviewing an engineering document provided by a major engineering firm and it's pretty clear that the process engineers don't understand how to specify the motor for an industrial grinding mill. So to take care of this topic, I'm going to pull up some notes that were uh, part of the SAG conference 2015 presentation that I gave along with my co-author Kurt Titchler, where we were discussing uh, what is involved in choosing and specifying a motor design speed for a grinding mill. So the purpose of the talk is to provide owners and EPCM engineers with some idea of what the, the specification of a design speed for a motor has on the operating cost, the capital cost of the motor, and, and more specifically too, I'm going to focus on how process engineers need to communicate with the motor designers to make sure you're asking for the right thing. Now, we've got to start with a motor characteristic that a lot of process engineers are not going to have encountered. When you're dealing with alternating current motors, you have something called the torque, you have something called the power. These two, um, these two quantities are related and you can't necessarily specify torque and power and speed all at the same time. The key thing is that the torque is calculated from the power and the speed of the mill or the power is calculated from the torque you specify and the speed of the mill that you specify. You can't specify all three, you can only specify two of the three and the third one is then computed. Another characteristic of a large mill motor is that the torque output of that motor is generally going to be constant up to some rated speed. So we use the term here, the knee point. On the diagram on the screen, you can see that the torque is relatively constant starting from zero motor speed up to a rated speed. That's the 1.85 hertz. Beyond that speed, you can no longer generate full torque with that motor and the torque drops off, in this case it's linearly. Um, actually, it's not linear, but for our purposes, let's just pretend it's linear. Key thing, you as the designer get to choose where that knee point is, and you need to communicate that to the motor, uh, motor vendor, the motor designer. Now, because the motor power and the motor torque are related by speed, based on the equation we just saw, when you do the math, the power has an opposite characteristic. So at zero speed, you have zero power available. And the power that is available from that motor increases linearly up until you get to that rated speed. And beyond that rated speed, the amount of power available to you is fixed. So zero speed is zero power, but it's maximum torque in this model. Key thing. If you are operating that mill below the rated speed of the motor, you do not have the full power of the motor available to you. You have to operate at or above that rated speed in order to have the full nameplate power of your motor available to you. Now here's the issue where process engineers run into problems when they're trying to communicate with motor designers. Process engineers think in terms of mill speed as a percentage or as a fraction of something called a critical speed. Critical speed is a function of a whole bunch of things that the motor designers have no control over. So one of the things is the diameter of the mill. Another is the, the wear of the liner in the mill. So as your liner wears out the critical speed, the speed at which you've got a centrifuging particle fixed to the edge of the mill, that changes. So you will have a different critical speed in terms of RPM of the mill when a liner is brand new versus when it's all worn out. So as a process engineer, most of our models are related to the critical speed of a mill because that makes it independent of the, the diameter of the mill. So small mills and large mills generally have the same characteristics at their same critical speed. Now critical speed is useless to motor designers. 
they need an absolute speed for the mill or for the motor if the you know let them deal with the gear ratios they need that in rpm or you can give them hertz hertz is cycles per second um, normally we would work in rpm because those just work in units that work really well with large grinding mills so another characteristic of motors is that they don't provide any more power or any more torque than what the process load on that motor actually calls for. So if you're turning a mill and the mill has a particular filling with a particular geometry and a particular weight and you're running it at a range of speeds, you'll get a line that looks kind of like the green line on this, this diagram. So uh, what I've shown here is the motor power characteristic, the maximum power you can evolve with that motor is the red line. And then that green line would be a typical process load at a fixed filling level and a fixed ball charge, this being a, a sag mill, as motor speed changes as a fraction of critical. So basically your process is gonna move back and forth along that green line. And as long as that green line is below the red line, your motor can provide enough power and enough torque to keep the whole system moving. And because torque and power are related, you can draw the same diagram except using torque rather than power as the vertical axis. So this is that same diagram except I've re-expressed it in terms of torque. So again, the lower the speed, you're going to have a constant torque, but you're not going to have a constant power available to you. Up till you get to some specified uh, design speed, which in this case is 75% of critical, after which the motor can no longer generate full torque. So again, the choice of this rated speed is critical when you're trying to write a specification to buy a grinding mill. Also be aware that motor torque is going to be the key parameter affecting the motor's cost. In really round numbers, about half of the cost of the motor is going to be related to the torque that is computed using this equation. So what this means, if you want to keep the torque low, you should keep the rated speed high. And this is backwards to what a lot of process engineers would expect. Normally you think more speed must be more price, must be more capital cost. It's actually the other way around. If you've got a higher speed, you set the rated speed of that mill or that motor at a higher speed, it generates less torque for a given power. Higher speed is less torque, which is less capital cost. That's your most capital efficient motor as long as it meets the process requirements which gets back to the green and the red lines I showed on the previous diagram. So there's another interesting thing you can look at here is there's always gonna be a couple of ways that you can generate a particular power draw in a mill. So here's a sag mill and I've got two process lines shown, one for a high ball charge in green and one for a slightly less high ball charge in purple. And what I'm trying to demonstrate in this chart is you've got a couple of options that will give you 19 megawatts of power draw based on the process demand. You can do it at a lower speed with a higher ball charge, or you can get the same power draw with a higher speed and a lower percent ball charge. So if you take the approach that all power is equal, these two different configurations will give you the same power but they're going to do it in a way that affects your operating costs. In really round numbers, if you have less balls in the grinding mill, you're going to consume less balls in the grinding mill. If your power is constant and you're consuming fewer balls, that's a lower operating cost. So running the mill at the higher speed, if the liners can handle it, if you're not throwing balls into the, the far side of the mill, damaging liners, uh, you want to run as high a speed as you reasonably can and that will give you the lowest operating cost unless something else has gone haywire like you're, you've moved out of the right grinding regime. So as a process engineer working on, a, on an engineering design, what do you need to specify? On your motor data sheets or on your mill data sheets, you need to specify you want X kilowatts of rated motor power 
at y RPM of mill speed. Do not specify the speed of the mill in percent critical to a motor designer because it means nothing to them. You need to choose the RPM. That's your job as a process engineer. You understand what the condition of the liner is supposed to be. You understand what the diameter of the mill is. You understand what percent critical speed it means. You need to use that knowledge to figure out what the RPM is that you want that motor to be operating at at that design point. If you are able to increase the, the rated speed, that will decrease the capital cost of the motor. And if you operate at that higher speed, there's an opportunity for the mill operators to drop the ball charge at the same power draw and uh, benefit from having less ball wear because there's just fewer balls in the mill. So that should do it for this video. So again, this is a, a representation of a SAG 2015 conference paper that was presented by myself and Kurt Titchler. So thank you to Siemens and to Kurt for their part in the, the actual paper. Uh, the paper itself is available in the SAG 2015 proceedings. I expect anybody who's watching this video should have those proceedings. Obviously, I, I welcome you to pull down the paper and read it yourself. And with that, I'll say thank you very much for your attention and good luck designing your next mills.